With just 10 races to go before the playoffs, heavy hitters like Kevin Harvick and Tyler Reddick find themselves on the outside looking in. Which bubble drivers are in the best position to make a late season playoff push? How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. It's been a busy week on this channel. We've talked history, ranking the best drivers since the year 2000. We've talked hypotheticals. I gave y'all some of my bold, silly season predictions. Today on Out of the Groove, we're talking about the here and now, what's directly in front of us over these next 10 weeks. The final push towards the playoffs, 10 regular season races to go, beginning this weekend at Nashville Super Speedway. We're gonna take a look at the current playoff grid and discuss which bubble drivers have the best shot at pointing their way in, potentially, or winning their way in over the next 10 weeks. First off, if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future NASCAR content. All right, yes, there's a lot of names and numbers in front of y'all right here, but this is the current NASCAR Cup Series playoff picture. All the way off to the left there, you have the regular season standings. Chase Elliott still holds a, a slim lead over there, but beneath me and all around me here is how the playoff grid currently stacks up. You've got guys like Ross Chastain leading the way with 13 playoff points to his credit. All 12 different winners are highlighted in yellow. That's right, 12 different winners through the first 16 races. I don't know if we'll get to 16 different winners, but by golly, we may get close. Anyway, the drivers I want to focus on are the names right there underneath me, the bubble drivers as I call them. I want to start off with Ryan Blaney. He is currently plus 95. He did win the All-Star Race, but he hasn't won a points paying race, so he's not technically locked in with a win. But considering his point situation and considering the tracks we have coming up over these next couple months, I'd say he's virtually a lock. We know how great he is at super speedways. We've got two of those. He's also a pretty good road racer. We've got three more of those before the playoffs. He's also been very good at short, flat ovals this season. He led over 100 laps at both Richmond and Phoenix. He also led 12 laps at Gateway and a handful at Martinsville as well. I mention that because New Hampshire is coming up. He could be a serious contender there. And don't forget Ryan Blaney won at Michigan last year. They'll race there in a few weeks. You know, Michigan's probably gonna race a little differently this year with a complete different car and rules package, but that's still worth mentioning as well. So between the tracks we have coming up and how many points he's currently accumulated, I'd say Ryan Blaney's virtually a lock. I wouldn't be too worried if I'm a Blaney fan. Let's talk about the guy right below him there. Martin Truex Jr. is plus 65. That sounds great, right? Look, I still feel really good about Martin Truex Jr. He's in the championship for nearly every year. I trust he and James Small will figure it out. They'll make the playoffs and they'll likely make a deep run. But I do have some questions like, what the heck happened at Martinsville in April? What the heck happened at Sonoma a couple weeks ago? These are tracks that Martin Truex Jr. practically owns, and in both cases, they weren't just uncompetitive. They were bad for the most part. I find this stat remarkable. Truex has only one top five in the past two months, and it was at Talladega. <laughs> that just, it's just to make it make sense. He did lead a bunch of laps at Gateway and Darlington pretty recently, so I still think Truex will win a race before the playoffs start, but you know, plus 65 sounds good. I don't think it's actually as big of a cushion as we think. Next up in 15th there, we have another Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota, Christopher Bell, plus 28. You know, in the era of stage racing, points can be made up pretty quickly. That's a solid cushion, likely not gonna lose it all in one week, but Mathematically, you could. Bell's been very consistent lately. He had a streak going of five straight top tens until he had early issues at Sonoma. I feel good about Christopher Bell, though. I think he will break through and win a race before the playoffs start. He's proven to be a pretty good road racer. Finished third at Circuit of the Americas earlier this spring, and we know how dominant he is at New Hampshire. He has never lost an Xfinity race at the Magic Mile. Three wins in three tries, and last year in the Cup Series. He probably wins that race if the race doesn't get called 10 laps early due to darkness. He was closing on Eric Almarola. It was going to be a battle. So I feel really good about Christopher Bell's chances of winning at New Hampshire. You know, it's been hard to pass at flat tracks this year and Christopher Bell's been a great qualifier. Gosh, he may lead every lap <laughs> later this summer. Let's keep going. The last guy in as they sit currently is Eric Almarola, plus seven. Just 16 races in, Almarola has already matched his top five total from last season, two, and his top 10 total from last season, five. So he's been more consistent this year. He's looked a little more like the Eric Almarola we've grown accustomed to seeing, but he's not leading laps. He's not contending for wins. He's led a grand total of six laps this year. And they all were in that Atlanta super speedway race. So 
Looking at where Eric Amarillo sits on the playoff grid right now, you look at some of the heavy hitters behind him we'll talk about in a second, like Kevin Harvick, like Tyler Reddick. I'd even throw Austin Dillon or Eric Jones into the mix there, or Bubba Wallace at a super speedway. I don't think Eric Amarola is capable of pointing his way in. Like, I don't see him going up and catching Martin Truex Jr. or heck, certainly not Ryan Blaney. And I think at least one guy behind him currently in points is gonna get a win and vault past him. So Eric Amarola needs to win. To me, it's gonna to have to come at a super speedway. His first two cup wins were both on super speedways. He did win New Hampshire last year and that is coming up, but boy, I don't know if I trust that. I'll throw Michigan into the mix. Some are suggesting it may race like a super speedway. We know Ford usually circles that race. So he's gonna have chances, but I don't love Eric Amarola's playoff hopes as he currently sits. Gonna need to win, calling it now. There's no way Eric Amarola points his way in. And the same can be said about, I'd say everyone behind him in points. We'll start with Kevin Harvick, the first guy out currently. He's minus seven from his teammate. So let's just talk about winning. He had the speed at Sonoma to maybe win that race. That's like the first time I feel like I could have said that all season long about the four car. That's encouraging. And his average finish on the season, 13.4, is is solid. It's not up to Kevin Harvick's standard, but it's solid. The problem I have with Harvick, and it's the same problem I have with his teammate Eric Amarola, is he's not leading laps. He's only led 13 laps this year, and 11 of them came in a super speedway. I expect him to pass Almarola in points, but I still think 16th on the playoff grid is not safe. I think Kevin Harvick will need to win a race to fend off you know, the Tyler Reddicks or the Eric Joneses or the Bubble Wallaces behind him. I'm encouraged by the speed I saw at Sonoma. There are a few more road courses coming up, but we have not seen consistent speed out of SHR in two years. That concerns me. There's a pretty big gap back to Tyler Reddick, 18th on the playoff grid, currently 42 points out. I don't know that he points his way in, so if it wasn't already obvious, he needs to win. And man, Tyler Reddick, what more can be said? He's been so close this year. That Bristol dirt finish still makes my stomach churn. The good thing about Reddick, though, compared to the last couple of guys I've talked about, is that he's led a ton of laps this year. I think Kyle Reddick could win anywhere. Road course, intermediate, super speedway, he's got a chance. He's led 249 laps this year. They've had more than their fair share of issues. They've broken parts, they've blown tires, blown motors, been crashed late. They've had tons of things go wrong this year. Some of it has been self-inflicted. Even the drivers made mistakes like at Sonoma, but they do have decent speed. I'm convinced the eight car will be in position to win a race before the playoffs start. This time, they just got to get it done. The racing gods, the universe has to be on their side this time. Like, since that heartbreaking Bristol dirt finish, he has four finishes outside the top 30. 30th or worse. That's They got to clean that up and they got to do it fast. Let's talk about his teammate, Austin Dillon, minus 47. He also has to win. You got to look at the super speedways. I'd say intermediates, but we don't really have any traditional intermediates left aside from maybe Michigan or, or Nashville this weekend, if you count that. Unlike his teammate Tyler Reddick, I have not seen consistent winning speed out of the three car. I mentioned Reddick's led 250 laps or whatever. Austin Dillon's led two. <laughs> look, he almost won the Coke 600. He pit for tires, had a tremendous restart at the end there, but I don't think he'll get many more of those opportunities. And we know he's not a great road racer. We got three more of those coming up. I, I don't feel great about Austin Dillon's chances. I'm sorry. I do want to talk about a few more drivers, 20th in points on back, starting with Eric Jones. He's 55 points out. His best shot to win is a super speedway as well, but I've said for a long time, that Eric Jones is a criminally underrated super speedway racer. He's got a couple wins, or he won a, the Bud Shootout, whatever it's called, the Clash a couple of years ago, and the summer race in 2018. But this year at Talladega, he led a bunch of laps, he was leading on the white flag, and you know finished sixth. So I think he'll be in contention at one of or both of the super speedway races left in this regular season. Just gotta bring it home this time. Michael McDowell, 21st, he is 93 points out. Of course, Super Speedway is always an option. He won Daytona last year, but let's talk about the road courses. There are three more left, and he already has a third and a sixth this year at the other two road courses. Maybe they catch a break on a caution, maybe play some tire strategy. If Michael McDowell gets the lead late in one of these races, he will be difficult to pass. Chris Buescher is 22nd. He's minus 105 points. Look, he proved at Sonoma a couple weeks ago. He's a sneaky good road racer. Don't rule those out. He also won his dual race at Daytona back in February. So I know I keep saying Super 
super speedways. Anyone can want a super speedway, but some of these guys have recent results to back them up, and Busher is one of those guys, so watch out for him there. Justin Haley, more of the same. Look, again, super speedways are his best shot, but he's as qualified as anyone. He's All four of his Xfinity wins came on super speedways, so... I mean, he's about as good as it gets for a young plate racer. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is minus 135. He had a hot streak there four weeks in a row, finishing inside the top 10. Cooled off right before the, the off week here. He's got a couple wins at Super Speedways back in the day. He's led a combined 38 laps this year at Daytona and Atlanta. He could very well be in contention. And the last guy I want to mention is Bubba Wallace. Well outside the realm of pointing his way in, he needs a win. He's won at Talladega before, second in this year's Daytona 500. We know he's a great super speedway racer, but that team also showed some great speed at Kansas, and I'd even say Charlotte earlier this year, a couple of traditional mile and a halfs. That got me kind of excited until I realized we don't have any traditional mile and a halfs left until the playoffs. I think his best shot is a super speedway as well. One more look at the playoff grid as things stand. Currently 16 races in, 10 to go until the playoffs begin. Leave a comment down below which driver we talked about here today has the best chance of making a late season playoff push and sneaking their way into the top 16, either with a win or maybe somehow on points. Share your thoughts down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Again, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. We talk NASCAR almost every single day here on this channel. News, predictions, rumors, race recaps, and much, much more. And as always, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. Your support is extremely generous and helps keep this channel growing every single month. I'll be at Nashville Super Speedway on Sunday, so if you're at the racetrack and you see me, feel free to come say hi. I don't think I'll have another video up until after the race, so I guess I'll see y'all Sunday night. Stay cool out there. It's, it's going to be a hot one. Thanks for watching.